When Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis on the 4th of April 1968, it was yet another traumatic political assassination in 60s America. His assassin, James Earl Ray, would join the likes of Lee Harvey Oswald in infamy. Unlike Oswald, Ray would not be captured on the day of the assassination and would evade a huge manhunt for months. Ray's motivation for killing King was racial hatred, but he was a cunning and experienced criminal in his own right. Following the assassination, Ray drove to Atlanta, ditched his car, then boarded a bus for Detroit, using the name Eric S. Galt. Once there, he boarded a bus for Windsor, Canada, and from there to Toronto. Ray was familiar with Canada. He had taken advantage of the Montreal World Fair to go on a robbery spree there in 1967. He favoured Toronto this time, though, fearing that he would not blend in as easily in French Canada. To avoid suspicion, Ray rented two rooms at separate locations and stayed eight hours at each. It took a full week before he saw his name in the Canadian media. By then, he had already acquired a false Canadian birth certificate and passport by researching old newspapers. Apprehension nearly came when he was stopped by a policeman for jaywalking, but the false address he gave was not checked. As a precaution, he took two new false identities. In an era when computer databases didn't exist, he easily obtained duplicate birth certificates, then called the real person, posing as a passport official. When they said they didn't have one, he apologised for the error, then promptly applied for a passport in their name. There's lots more to come in this video, but please consider liking, subscribing to the channel, and sharing. And please consider supporting my work with a PayPal donation. The link is in the description. Thank you. Ray's long-term game plan was to make his way to Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, which had no extradition treaty with the US. Once there, he fancied that he could fight for white supremacy as a mercenary. It was an absurd idea, but he had few options. He bought a ticket to London, and after waiting for his new passport, flew there on the 6th of May 1968, passing through the airport unchallenged. He flew on to Lisbon, having got the idea that mercenaries for Africa were recruited there. Unable to find a connection, he flew back to London ten days later, holing up in an Earl's Court flop house for two pounds a night. Despite the modest accommodation, Ray was low on cash. He robbed a bank near the hotel, but came away with only a hundred pounds. An attempted robbery at a jewellery store had to be aborted, after the owners tripped an alarm. In a desperate move, Ray called the foreign desk at the Daily Telegraph, asking for the contact name of anyone hiring mercenaries. Amazingly, he was given the name of someone in Brussels, and quickly made arrangements to fly there. By this time, one of his Canadian aliases had been blown, and the FBI knew he was in London. But that was not what caught him. On embarkation for the 8th of June flight from London to Brussels, a sharp-eyed immigration officer, Kenneth Human, noticed that when Ray took his passport from his wallet, there was another one inside. Even after the police intervened, Ray almost talked his way out of it as the identity of his false passport was not on any watch list. But the game was up. Martin Luther King's assassin had evaded the authorities for two months. Had this veteran criminal not made a rookie mistake at Heathrow, he may have made it to Rhodesia and escaped justice for the murder of one of the great unifying figures of the 20th century.